Hi, my name is Lee Fallebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Can you do it once more and hit it? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lee Fallebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. That sounded exactly the same. Oh, you, why do you want me to do it? Like, you know, like Peppy, like you're on the radio. Um, hi, this is Lee Fallebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Don't Go to Klaxvik is, is a song on the record that uh, I think turned out pr- pretty good. Uh, uh, there was supposed to be all kinds of brass in it, and then uh, it didn't sound right, and then I just wrote a... I didn't sleep very much the night before we recorded, and I, I wrote these string arrangements, uh, you know, right before... Uh, this the the quartet came in and uh, from the first take it sounded lovely and we just recorded it and uh, yeah I feel like that kind of makes the song I feel like that song without the strings I wouldn't be too into hearing again but I feel like they they played beautifully on it yeah.
baby in sheets that grow I've soaked fishermen standing somewhat together miles from the shore in the fog lamp weather they're calling yes they're calling from their ships Welcome to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host, and today I have Leif Volbeck on the show. Hello. Hey there. Great. So we've just heard, don't go to, I'm going to say this wrong, Klaxvik? Klaxvik. Klaxvik, sorry. You put like three Ks. We've just heard, don't go to Klaxvik. So after hearing that song, the question I naturally have is, did she go? What happened? Uh, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> Well, everybody who listens to the song is going to want to know. Yeah, that's okay. You, don't, you really don't want to say? Okay. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the story behind this record, Inland, is that you wrote half of it in Iceland. So, wow. You're a guy from Montreal. You went all the way to Iceland. Mm -hmm. uh, I read that you did it to study philosophy and to study Icelandic. Yes, that's true. That's true. Usually, usually no one knows that or asks me. And, and I mean, like, that's true. Usually. Not a lot of Canadians choose to do that, so I would love it if you could talk a little bit about that choice. Uh, I just I was doing a degree in philosophy. I, I really I really love uh, I love studying that, and uh, uh, one of the things I also love is is learning languages. Even though I'm, I'm never very good at it, uh, in the end, like you can't perfect it. So uh, I thought that Icelandic was a great challenge, and it's beautiful, and it's uh, has a lot to do, kind of the same connection as English. It's like uh, English and Icelandic kind of come from the same roots. Oh. So it was really enlightening, and uh, it was great to be in a foreign country like that. I mean, it's just, you got to kind of go to know, but it's very, very entrancing. But it's one of those places that you have to, like, specifically want to go to. Yeah. When you were there, can you tell us a little bit what it's like? Because I'm a Canadian, I've never been there. Well, a friend of mine lived in the Yukon for a bit, and she and we exchanged photos, and it wasn't that. Well, I mean, it's pretty different, but, I mean, there was some similarities, but a lot of Canadians don't go up north either, myself included. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty dreamlike in terms of when you get outside of the city, there's a lot of lava fields, like, dry, like dried up, so it's like, um, well, not dried up, but, like, you know, after thousands of years of, of lava flow, it kind of turns into, like, uh, gray rock and it gets covered in moss so it's kind of like this beautiful like um it's i don't know it's hard to describe it's most of the countryside is just green green moss that hasn't been touched and it's just dewy and fresh and a lot of beautiful um clouds because of the low pressure you know like really low clouds i cool. don't know like i mean it's just it's it's there's it's really dramatic it changes that's like just like one little part of it, the country you know that's the scenery. What about the people? Because I can only imagine. But like they're pretty modern, so they're so, they're so like they look out west and they look out east and they got European clothes and they've got American music and so it's it's really, it's and a lot of them leave very often, so they're very like well rounded. Their English is impeccable and their musical taste is 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 really really selective. So I found it really enriching and to be around. Uh, well, I mean, not that every Icelander is some sort of wonderful person, you know, but. Uh, in general, there was a lot of. Uh, it wasn't isolating in in that sense. Maybe in in the sense that I wasn't very. I wasn't good enough at Icelandic to really feel like I was like part of this society, you know. But you know, maybe one day. <laughs> so it's one phrase in Icelandic that every Canadian should know to mess with the people once they're there. I don't think you can mess with an Icelander. They they always win. Um, I don't think there's. You could say all kinds of things, but I don't know. Come on, how about one phrase? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, well, I've taught a friend of mine how to say I don't speak Icelandic, which is kind of pointless, but it sounds good. Ég tala ekki íslensku. Ég tala ekki íslensku. My name is Leif Wallabek, and you're listening to The Interview Show. You couldn't lie to me in Paris. You wouldn't want to embarrass yourself in front of the fathers of the fellas who'd raise their eyebrow umbrellas. Never one for a fuss Unless it is just the two of us We started getting into trouble, you see When we started loving in degrees 
The coming and going, spirits in the door hinges And I'm a sitting peeling Suzanne's oranges Nothing I ever do is ever good enough For escaping the love we've been making For what I put into question You put it to bed just to like you Put those wicked thoughts into my head Tell me when are you leaving town The sight of you makes me teary-eyed Your body's been honest but here again it lies So I'm a-going to that city saved by paper and not sold Which you're judging by those standards could have been a letter that you wrote Sur ce très cher adieu, la voilà trop causée Le temps qu'on perd à lire une missive n'a pas valu la peine qu'on écrit Hi, this is Lee Fallebeck and you're listening to The Interview Show uh, yeah, I guess I wrote the record that's out now I don't remember when I wrote it, I guess it would have been over, over yeah, two, two years ago, maybe a little bit, because I maybe I, rec- I recorded it two years ago. So anyhow, yeah. So I, I'm I'm actually very slow. So uh, this this record that I'm working on, I, th- I feel like should have been done by now, but I just keep on adding songs and adding parts. Okay, well, I don't want to talk too much about it because people can't hear it on the radio. Right. I want to talk about this one. So sure. now that you're writing the new record, mm-hmm. inland, when you look back on it, what do you think your strengths and weaknesses were? Oh, um. That's I know what you're saying. Go, I think about that because that's part why I'm making the other record. Um, I I the way I did that record is that I um, I went to the studio for ten days and we recorded it all and mixed it all. Just me and the and the guy that ran the studio and did the engineering. Um, and then I had a few friends come in to do some overdubs and things like that, like violin parts and cello and all that. Um, so I did it really quick and. It was part artistic and part practicality that I did it half acoustic and the other half with lots of arrangements. And uh, sometimes I wonder if all the songs shouldn't have had arrangements or if they all should have been acoustic. Um, and so, yeah, and it was just working fast is it brings is a good thing, but all, at the same time it kind of uh, didn't allow me to completely get all my thoughts down. Um, so I'm kind of doing the opposite now. I'm like kind of taking a lot more time to uh, to flesh things out, and it might be a bad thing. But I don't know. But yeah, the first record, it, it, it was... The good thing and the bad thing is that it was done really quickly. And so it has that kind of quick energy to it, but also a few mistakes. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You've had like two years to play those songs. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about them writing new material? I think some of them hold up, and then I think others are kind of like stuck in the year that I wrote them. Not not in a bad way or a good way, just I don't really... Um, uh, I get super excited about singing them, but I'm also doing a lot of shows to to new new people all the time. So it's not like I have a you know like a, a room of people that are like dying to hear this one song. So usually I play the song that I think is you know the best interview songs, the best songs that come out uh, to someone you don't know. You know the ones that maybe are easier to understand. So, so what's one song you think that survived particularly well? Um, I think. I think there's a song I wrote called 1921 and that one's on the piano but it, I think the reason it survived or I, that I play it and I really enjoy it is because I kind of I couldn't bring I didn't have a piano most places where I go and so I learned how to play it on the guitar so then I ended up writing kind of a new part for it and new, some new chords and so and the lyrics held up they, they, I think I wrote them from the right place and so playing it live I don't get tired and I don't guffaw at my own words you know sometimes it, you can be kind of embarrassed by what you write or a bit you know feel like it's a bit lackluster but I, f- I find that one just kind of melts with the music well uh, my name is Lee Volobeck and you're listening to The Interview Show Some 
sign of the old land to wash up on the shore in the city's afternoon behind the buildings white Watched us look for the moon that night But we could not find the moon The key to you ever since we met Is you don't lock any door I'm climbing up your Snowy steps My shoes on the wet wet floor Now she's in the shower I hear the pipes are creaking Groaning like the traffic outside She comes down and sits next to me Mouth was open wide. Your picture is a portrait. The portraits never done. I don't know how it got here, but I know. Hi, my name is Lee Fallebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Okay, do you want some more? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lee Fallebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. That sounded exactly the same. Oh, you, why do you want me to do it? Like, you know, like Peppy, like you're on the radio. Um, hi, this is Lee Fallebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. So the songs that, that last are the ones that lyrically work, but also I can change a bit the rhythm and the bit the chords and a little bit like that I've always wanted to ask a musician this when you're in a situation like you where you've like had these songs with you for a long time and you can start to critically judge them on what works and what doesn't can you change things about the songs like you just said like would you change lyrics and whatever and re-record them I notice a lot of artists don't do that yeah I don't really understand why they wouldn't um well live I think it's it's like a, it's a it's really great if I don't like something about a song and I figure out what to do changing it I think is like really fun and really important you know because or else sometimes it'll make the difference between how you perform it if you you know if, if the lines are there and you really care um, but re-recording it is a bit tricky because I feel like that energy and the amount of time that I have or that one has to record I feel like you want to put that towards the new song because sometimes a song evolves so much that it, it could easily become a another you know so it's, it's almost worth just you know cutting your losses and moving on and learning from your mistakes and I think but but I mean a live show is, is kind of the most important thing uh, I guess I kind of almost didn't answer your question there <laughs> it's all good it's going to be different each time I think I didn't know how you'd be but I came up with a funny question which I don't know if I'm going to get a good answer from you oh, okay but I'll ask anyway so a lot of people have been comparing you to Jeff Buckley and Nick Drake those two guys left Earth early. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got. Sorry, I've let you finish. <laughs> so, if you were gonna write 
and any for yourself that way, like obviously you, me and your fans <laughs> hope that you stay around for a long time and make lots of music. But if, you know, something horrible was going to happen and you were going to write that story, how would you write yourself out? Uh, what do you mean write the story? Like if I were a journalist looking back on myself? Yeah, and deceased? you were going to give yourself a tragic end. Oh, like how should I, how would I go out? Yeah. What, you know, the Nick Drake pills or the Jeff Buckley swim in the lake? Yeah. The swim in the river? Um, I think that's a horrible <laughs> tempting of fate. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't think there is a good way to go out. I think it, as long as you've done what you need to do, I think that that's a good way to go out. Okay, and so what is that for you? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully something that isn't too embarrassing when you listen to it in 20 years. Okay, another thing that I've read a lot about Inland about is Inland has been called a travel log album. So does that put pressure on you now with this current album to make it equally as traveled? Um, I only, it's weird because I only notice when people like mention that, well, someone a year ago was like, oh yeah, you, you have a lot of place names in your songs and I completely didn't notice. And then it kind of pisses me off now that I know that. Um, cause I don't want to, I just find it really easy to travel somewhere and then have the backdrop as the city is kind of like a setting or as a mood. And you know, every city has like this, this little vibe that you feel and it's really personal and you kind of like, it's kind of like a, a character in a way or, um, so yeah, so I've I've just been more conscious that I, I don't want to become like, you know, I don't want to like Sufjan Stevens it, you know, and just have like every city like documented, even though it, he did a really good job with what he did. But, um, I'm try I'm not trying in any way to like make it one way. The songs just come out the way they do, um, and I'm I've been traveling less uh, in terms of. Wow, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> You're on tour right now. Yeah, dude. yeah. No, I I was in like. Like I was, I've been traveling more, but I'm, I spend less time in the cities that I travel to. I, like, I spend less than, I was like, you know, the longest I was in one city, like, on the last tour in Europe was like, you know, like, 48 hours or something. And it was like, that was like, happened once. So I think traveling, it's not the same kind of traveling that I used to do, where I could let things sink in. And, you know, you're just kind of skimming the surface as opposed to kind of diving a little deeper. And like, t you know, talking a language and meeting locals and stuff. You're just meeting promoters and nice people, but you don't actually, you know, get to know their, their middle name, you know? So, what am I saying? I don't have that much traveling, really, in me anymore, so it seems to be less the case. I think. I think. So I have to ask you now, <laughs> what is the vibe you get from Vancouver? I, it's, it's a confusing vibe. I really like it, but I haven't figured out because it's so different. It's not very Ottawa. It's not very Montreal. It's not very Toronto. And it's not very anything. I find it's very Vancouver, and it's, 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 I haven't, like, again, I haven't hung out in it enough. So, um, but I, I really like it. I like uh, I like how cheap the sushi is, and that I like being able to see the water. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great city. I just yeah, again, I'm, <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time in bars here. So it's tricky to see the whole picture. Cool, I guess. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Last question is: I love the guest to pick a song from their current album. Talk a little bit about it as I bring up the music. Uh, from the current album, so um, the the song "Northernmost Ava Maria" on uh, my record is uh, it was it was kind of a f fun recording session because we were gonna throw it away and then we uh, we thought everything was was fine and then it sounded funny and then we kind of like just messed with it and we got the guitar to sound like a mandolin off the top and cranked all the highs and cranked it and had a few beers just me and this the, the engineer and so it was. It was kind of like this miraculous song that all of a sudden we figured out what it needed and it was just like a really solid, abusive mixing job. And uh, so it sounds a bit cataclysmic at times and then all the, the violins fall in. And I think it was the same kind of board that Nick Drake would have used, I think. So the violins are really lush at the end. So I feel like it's just a big, it's a big build up to like a lush violin uh, string arrangement. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not very clear, but that's how I feel. Yeah. Hi, my name is Lee Vollebeck, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Midwinter's Eve, midweek in October. I saw a churchyard, green stardust blowing all over. Then it snowed all over the city. The street lamps fog so pretty. Snow all over the city
Though she showed she had nothing to hide By the window, by the bed There was something said The morning was a coming so, so soon With her orchard breath and bloom She's coming so soon Oh 